Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It is Thursday, September 21st, and we are here trying to help you make good, better, whatever, some sort of improvement, generally speaking, of your financial life, of your financial matters. If you have a question or you want to noodle through um, maybe a bigger issue, just give us a holler. Go to jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, and the little form will pop up. Complete the form. And if you want to join us on the air live, then you check the box. And you know who gets you on the air? None other than my co-host of this show, Mark Talercio. Mark, how are you today? I'm doing great. You know why? You just said September 21st. So I'm thinking we are approaching the first day of fall, right? Oh, yes. The, the autumnal equinox. It is. It is this year, September 23rd. So here it comes. All right. That's great. Mark and I are just, we are so alike in many ways that as soon as the summer is over, like after Labor Day, we're like, excellent. The best four months of the year now begin. I think that uh, you are okay with spring. I despise the month of March and into April. I hate it. Let me give you a quick ranking. Uh, Fall, winter, spring, summer. That's how I roll. Wow. Uh, I do probably fall, winter, summer, spring. Spring is tough for me. I don't like spring at all. It's like a tease. Allergies. It's like every Jew in New York's like Bleh, walking around, my allergies, my allergies. And it's not just us anymore. Everyone has allergies. And uh, also it's like the the tease weather, which I hate. I'm okay with summer. I really am. It's just that, you know, I have to be in a place where people are normal about like air conditioning. I can't go to someone's house who says, well, I have a house in the Hudson Valley. We don't need air conditioning, which is baloney because of course you do. Uh, I, I, in fact, I'm always funny because I live in a pre-war building. And uh, as a result, that means that the air conditioning is on quite a bit. And then as soon as it's winter, the windows come up because it gets so hot in these buildings. Does it get hot in yours? Same here. Yeah. The winter, the windows are always open during the winter. Can't control it. No, it's amazing. And so anyway, look at us complaining. Oh, poor us. Anyway, if you have a financial question, go to the website, jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Do sign up for the free weekly newsletter. Oh, by the way, Mark, all my miles are in. I've done my virtual ride. 275 miles. I'm very excited. I did it very efficiently. And I want to thank everybody who helped contribute to my cycle for the cause. If you would still like to do that, I'm not taking it down till the end. I love, I love when people from the center, uh, the LGBTQ center in New York, they say to me, how do you get so many small dollar donations? I said, I just ask my wonderful audience and they give it to me. It's amazing. So if you want to still give, do so. I'd love to have you participate. And uh, next year, hopefully, God willing, I will be riding live again. Just couldn't do it this year because of scheduling. All right, Mark, let's bring on our listener, Jennifer from Long Beach. Jennifer joins us to chat about what? Tell us what's going on, Jennifer. Well, first of all, hi, Jill and Mark. I'm calling today to ask you guys about, we will probably be getting an additional 30K every year for the next 10 years. And my question is, if we should buy whole life with a 10 year premium paying period with it. Okay, let me just answer that. No, next. (laughs) (laughs) We just got off the phone with somebody uh, who literally said to us, like, I made the biggest mistake. I bought this whole life policy. I can't believe it. So let's Let us find out why someone in the insurance industry got their hooks into you and thinks that this is a good idea. So first, Jennifer, tell us about yourself. I am 45, Mm -hmm. um, married. My husband is 53, and I have one daughter who's six. Our combined income, and we're very fortunate, it's about 660K. Whoa. Hold on a second. You just have one kid, a six-year-old, right? Correct. Oh, God, that makes it a lot easier. So 660 combined income. Is it about split equally or is one of you a bigger wage earner than the other? It's about 40-60 in terms of the the income split. Mm -hmm. 40 you and 60 him? Yes. Okay, got it. 
Do you have any other insurance in place right now? Because you do have a six-year-old. I'm just wondering if you've already purchased some insurance. We both have insurance through our um, employer Mm -hmm. for close to a million dollars each. Okay. So there's a million dollars of coverage on each of you through your employers. Is this, is this the kind of policy that if you just said, I'm done, I want to move to my job, that you could take that policy with you? Unfortunately not. Okay. So it's not portable. What about your husband's? Both of ours, um, it's not portable. Okay. But maybe you don't need it because maybe you have a ton of money saved. There's that. So Jennifer, tell us a little bit about what you've done in terms of savings for you guys. Like, let's start with you. Do you use a retirement plan through work? Um, Yes. Okay. What do you have? A 401k? I have a 401k. Um, It is about 890. And uh, a third of that is Roth. And the other third is uh, 401k. I bet you meant two thirds because I was going to say, where's the other third to be snarky, but I'm not going to. So it's one third (laughs) Roth, two thirds traditional. (laughs) It's early for her. Jennifer's like, you know what? Cut me some slack, Schlesinger, and quit your sarcasm. Okay. So that's great. That's amazing. And is that the only retirement account? Do you have some old retirement accounts floating around? So then I have a Roth um, IRA, Mm -hmm. a 45K. And I have a personal brokerage account of 70K. Do you guys keep, I mean, do you keep your money separate uh, or do you combine everything generally? Like as you look at planning, I guess is really what I'm asking. We we have a little bit of both. We have it separately. This is basically before we got married and then we have a joint. Uh, okay. So do you have a joint brokerage account in addition to the $70,000 account? Yes, we do. Tell me what's in there. We have a joint uh, brokerage of 52000 Tell me about his retirement account. What does he use? His is just straight 401k of about 600000 But he has a Roth IRA of 25000 mm-hmm. and he has a own brokerage of 50000 Okay. What about like, um, you know, boring cash in the bank? About 120000 Do you guys own your home together? Yes, we do. Okay. How much is the house worth? Um, it's about $2.5 million. Holy crap. Man, oh man. Okay. Uh, what about a mortgage on that? It's about nine forty. What's the interest rate on the mortgage? 2.85. You're not paying that thing down. I'm just going to let that roll. Do you love your house? We do. We love oh, it. Oh, that's so great. I like it when people love where they are. I think that that's great. Wherever you are, you should hopefully love it or like it enough. I certainly love your mortgage rate. Tell me, is the kid in private school or public school? Public school. Is that the plan for, uh, you know, through high school, you think? Um, I think so. What else do we need to know about you guys? We do have a student loans. What? How is that possible? I know. It just happens. It's, okay. What yeah. do you have? <laughs> um, 42000 left in student loans. For you? For me, yeah. And he? he? He has none. Okay. Any other debt besides the student loan and the mortgage? No other debt. Okay. How's the cash flow? I mean, you guys are both maxing out your retirement accounts. And what else happens on a monthly basis? The cash flow is pretty good. Probably put about uh, 4500 each month into our joint brokerage account. Mm-hmm. Um, we do do... Um, through both of our work, we have a um, mega Roth. So I put about 66 total each year and he puts almost 60. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's just, that's just recent. So, And you're still okay. And you're still good with your cash flow, even doing that. Yes. That's unbelievable. So, okay, we're talking to you. It's Thursday, September 21st. And uh, just in 10 short days, you'll be repaying the, the loans. I or, or, or have you been paying all along? I've been paying all along. I haven't stopped. Um, my interest is 2.5%. Hmm. And that's why. Yes, I see. You don't have a 6.5% loan. You've got an old loan and it's federal or is it private? No, it's private. Okay. It'll be done, right? I mean, it'll be done. Who is this person who is saying the additional $30,000, what's the additional 30000 coming from? It's going to come from our bonus and our long-term incentives oh, um, that, we, that we get. 
let me be clear about this. I don't think you really need is is this being sold to you as a supplemental retirement account? Correct. No, don't do this. This is a disastrous decision if you make it. Uh, not disastrous because like I don't want to be too histrionic here, but it's just uh, completely unnecessary. There's no reason to use whole life for this particular reason. Now, I I think there is some insurance issues here. So I just want to like talk that through in a second. But whole life as an investment is a very expensive way for you to invest. And you guys have a lot of money. And I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure that you even need any additional life insurance. Are you guys both secure in your jobs? I mean, as secure as you could be, let's say that. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Okay. And what's the game plan on retirement? Like, you know, your husband's a little bit older than you are, but is he going to work like 10, 12? Like, I mean, you have a kid though. So like how much longer are you guys planning on working? I think we want to work until she's ready for high school. Um, high then- school? I was I mean, thinking I'm sorry. About college. College. I meant to say college. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was getting a little ambitious. <laughs> I guess so. We've got a dozen years, kiddo. So just pace yourself. Okay. So retirement in 12 years, let's say, right? Are you guys saving um, for a 529 for her? So she has a few 529s um, from relatives, like grandparents. Um, mm-hmm. It's about 23000 right now. Mm-hmm. And she has a custodial account that we just put money in, um, about 40000 Why custodial and not just add to the 529s? I, I don't know. He, my husband said, let's do a custodial account. I mean, I, I would think that a 529 is better. Are the 529 plans held in someone else's name with your daughter as the beneficiary? Correct. It's oh. held um, grandparents' name. Okay. So maybe why don't you just put, open up a 529 account and pop some money in there and let's get this, let's move this ahead because that is actually a better way for you to be. It's a much more efficient way for you to save for education. Do you guys want to pay for uh, UCLA or do you want to pay for Stanford? Uh, we'll pay for whatever school she can oh, get into. Oh my God. The good parent answer. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so Mark, how much money do they have to have in a 529 plan so that this genius six-year-old can go wherever she wants. I mean, I know people are going to think this sounds insane, but uh, I would say, you know, you'd probably want to have two hundred fifty to 300000 in there. Oof. How does that sound for you, Jennifer? Uh, I know. I'm sorry. You have so much cash flow right now. 10000 a year into that 529, 12000 a year is going to do it. Think about this. You got that thirty grand a year that the ding-dong insurance salesman wants to get. Let's capture that. Let's get that and put that, you know, you guys can each put 15 grand a year into a 529 plan and do it. And that's it. That's where your 30 should go. That's what I would do. Don't you think, Mark? Uh, Definitely a large chunk of it. I don't know if it has to be all 30, but I would, like I said, a a minimum 12 grand for sure every single year. All right. So can you, can you get aboard that, Jennifer? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So here's the next thing. Uh, You guys, neither of you has a pension, right? We both have pensions. What? Uh, very little, though. Uh, like what? He has he has three hundred a month okay. uh, at retirement. Okay, and I get fifteen hundred a month at retirement. What's retirement for for you and for, to get that fifteen hundred? What age would that have to come at? It would be sixty five for myself. At sixty five, you're not working till you're sixty five. That's not happening. I mean, it'll start, but you will not work till 65 because we're only going to have you work for 12 more years, right? And in 12 years, you're only going to be 57. So what would you guys do for um, health insurance then? Through my employer, I can get um, health insurance (gasps) until I'm 65 if I work with them for 10 plus years. So I'm already six years in. Oh my God. You can't leave this job. Mark, how do you feel about their retirement goals of 12 years? How much money do you think you really spend? And then Mark's going to weigh in on whether you're going to make it or not in 12 years. How much do you think you spend monthly? Uh, We spend monthly probably 12,000. What do you think, Mark? Can they make this in 12 years? Uh, Yeah, I would have to say yes. Based on the numbers that they have, they're going to have, you know, she calls them small pensions, but they're pensions. They're saving a ton of money. I mean, it's going to, I think it's going to be okay and it's doable and you've solved for the health insurance for yourself because he'll be able to claim Medicare. I think this is good. Where is the brokerage account? Where is that held? 
It's with fidelity. And you got, you're fine managing it. It sounds like you're very like la di da, but it sounds like uh, y- you know how to do this, right? We don't do much. Basically, we just put the money in there and it goes into index funds and, and you're we done. just forget about it. Yeah. Right. So, how is it that this insurance salesperson wormed him or her way into your life? She's actually uh, my tennis buddy. Oh, Jesus. Is this going to screw up your tennis game? I'm, <laughs> we are so, this is not good, Mark. We're going to break up the, uh, the doubles team. No, she's she's not my doubles partner. She's a uh, she's a, a buddy that I play tennis with. Well, she just she just uh, double faulted. Right. Oh, nice. Very nice, Mark. Uh, you know what? Why don't we just say it's a foot fault, and we'll just say to her, "Thanks so much. Uh, we're going to go a different direction. Thank you. You don't need a whole life insurance policy. It would actually be an I would almost say an irresponsible suggestion. So I hope she's a really great tennis buddy and that's wonderful. Let's leave it at that. And uh, let's not get you down the road where you're do- you're, you've actually purchased this policy and then you actually have to find a fourth because you're so mad at her for selling you a piece of something that you don't need. As you like to say, and it's very appropriate here, it would be a unforced error. Oh, nice. <laughs> An absolute unforced error. And we want you to be all cocoa right now with fewer unforced errors and a winning strategy. And you know what? You guys are doing amazing. You're doing amazingly well. So here's what I would do. The additional $30,000 a year, you guys can put up to however much you want in the 529. Put the rest in the brokerage or, you know, and just pay down the, the stupid student loan as it happens. Keep doing what you're doing and stay in this job. Because that that benefit of being able to buy the health insurance and also, you know, listen, having a pension is really helpful to you, especially because you're younger than your husband. And I think if we do all this, I think you'll be in great shape. And by the way, the more you save, the less you actually need life insurance anyway. You know, it's Perfect. A, that that's really the most important thing. Do you guys have your estate documents done? Yes, we do. Oh, you're so good. What else can we help you with today? I think that that was it. Jennifer, we are letting you go. Thank you so much for joining us. You're great. In great shape. Don't buy whole life. Do put more money in your 529 plan. Do make sure that you're, you know, don't, you don't have to kill it, but like keep doing what you're doing. You've got a nice cadence here of the amount of money you're putting away. You're doing a really great job. No crazy products, no paying off mortgages you're all in good shape. So we wish you the best of luck. If you are like Jennifer and you've been pitched something, God, this is crazy, Mark. We are hearing from a lot of people who are getting the hard sales pitch of permanent life insurance. By the way, you should check out my segment. If you go to jillonmoney.com and you hit video, I did a segment on life insurance. You'll be able to see just whether or not you need insurance and really permanent insurance. Very few people need it. So I would avoid it if I were you. We very much encourage you to sign up for our free weekly newsletter and to subscribe to the Jill on Money live subscription service, access to quarterly live webinars and more bonus content. If you have a question, again, always go to JillOnMoney.com and hit the contact us button. Mark Talercio is the co-host and executive producer. He's also the web king. We are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Do something nice for someone else today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week. 